Let's chat about pelvic fractures. Pelvic fractures are one difficult to repair. Uh, the pelvis is deep and there's a lot of muscles around the, the bones um, and the nerves uh, can be a problem. Oftentimes, a patient with pelvic fractures can be treated conservatively, so rest, crate rest, and uh, clearly pain medication, right? Uh, we need to manage the patient's pain. All I'm talking to you about is managing the fracture itself. I leave managing the patient as a whole, and clearly the client, up to you. But most and many pelvic fractures will do well with cage rest. The ones that you need to be really cognizant that maybe they do need more help are clearly any acetabular fractures or fractures involving the acetabulum uh, because that could make ambulation problematic later on in, you know, for this patient and those do tend to be painful. Although you can consider a femoral head and neck ostectomy in those patients as well. Uh, and you don't have to do it immediately. You can let everything else heal in that patient. And, you know, in a month or two or six, if they're having issues, you can do the femoral head and neck ostectomy. I also find that sacroiliac luxations, they can be really painful. It can take them a little bit more to get under control and come around from an SI lux. Um, and SI lux, I do like to see them surgically repaired in a perfect world, right? Uh, but if not an option, then I would create rest. If surgical repair is an option, these can be done in a closed manner, but um, you definitely need to have the equipment and it has to be the right type of SI. If it's associated with a fracture, I find that those are a lot more difficult to manage closed but these are much better done closed rather than trying to do an open reduction and stabilization in most cases. Cats, gotta be a little bit cautious with cats when you see a narrowing of the pelvic canal because cats love to get constipated uh, when that pelvic canal is narrowed. Um, so be aware of that and you want to, you know, forewarn clients and you want to make sure that you manage those cats that may have a tendency to constipate because their pelvic canal is narrowed. And there's that rule of thumb of narrowed pelvic canal by a 50% narrowing. You know, I find cats, man, they skim that 50% and they're constipated. Even sometimes narrowed at 40%, some of them have a little more difficulty. Whereas dogs, I find, you know, that 50% rule may or may not apply. We don't see as many dogs, not never, but we don't see as many dogs get constipated with uh, a narrowed pelvic canal. Some of these dogs with, um, or cats with really horrible pelvic fractures, especially if there's nerve impingement, um, urethra or bladder dysfunction, you, you need to be aware of that um, without full you know, medical management and surgery and care, they may not do very well. So you, you may wanna not consider a conservative option in a patient that has a lot of pelvic disruption and other associated problems. So nerve, fecal matter, urinary matters associated with it. Other than that, pelvic fractures give conservative management to go. And don't forget the pain meds.